George Brawley, co-founder of General Aviation Modifications, Inc., has been working on an unleaded avgas for nearly 10 years. In 2021, the FAA granted its developer supplemental type certificates that allow the fuel to be used on hundreds of piston aircraft, representing about 70% of the overall fleet. However, the remaining 30% that are not covered by the STCs use 100 octane fuel and account for 80% of all avgas utilization. Last March the 2nd, we had an email from the Wichita Aircraft Certification Office saying that uh, we had completed all the certification requirements for all, without exception, of the spark ignition aircraft piston engines and all the aircraft that use those engines, and that the AML STCs would be signed and issued as soon as uh, Washington and FAA headquarters gave them permission to sign it. This final step in the STC process has been a challenge, and it may yet take some time to obtain final FAA approval. Brawley is hopeful that the announcement will come this summer. Once that hurdle is cleared, the next phase can begin where the fuel is manufactured in bulk, distributed, and sold. As you saw out there, I mean, this fuel is not hard to make. I can splash blend 10,000 gallons on the ramp at this airport. Any competent refiner or even a large blending facility can make this fuel. This fuel is completely mixable or interchangeable, or the fancy word for that is fungible, with existing 100 low lead. So there's no reason for there to have to be extra infrastructure to handle this transition. GAMI, headquartered in Ada, Oklahoma, is a familiar name to many in aviation. Brawley and his partner, Tim Roll, founded the company in 1994. Perhaps its best known product is GAMI injectors, fuel injectors that fix the imbalance on the fuel air ratios from cylinder to cylinder in continental engines. At the GAMI facility, two test beds are mounted inside walls covered with honeycomb soundproofing, which cuts the noise level significantly. The goal is to get the test engine running on G100UL to destroy itself. That hasn't happened in the years-long testing process. In a room next door, GAMI employees monitor engine performance on a bank of monitors mounted on a steel case. We got our whole crew in here. Uh, and we spent a day and a half uh, doing FAA detonation testing on a high octane unleaded gas on that high compression turbocharged engine that's uh, out there and uh, successfully passed it all. And that led to the STCs that were announced at Oshkosh last July. And there's a whole bunch more waiting for headquarters to approve until Wichita they can sign them. So, what lies between the issue of the STC and the moment you get to fill the tanks of your airplane with G100UL? Brawley says time and logistics. Well, look, it's not going to happen overnight. But it occurs to me that the logical way to do this, and frankly, what's the right word, the righteous way to do this, uh, we've got airports in California for the can't sell a high octane unleaded egg gas. Uh, they can't sell a high octane in gasoline of any kind right now. And it seems to me like that it would be appropriate to try and get fuel on those airports as an initial uh, rollout and then let it spread to the rest of the country. Jill Tolman, AOPA pilot.